So sky swaps tend to get these halos. You can see them over here. We're gonna be able to fix that in this episode where it's just not filling in everything properly. A lot of extra stuff around these branches that really shouldn't be there. We should be seeing sky. So it's a real common issue. I'm gonna show how to fix it with a couple techniques in this episode. So this is very common. This was using the sky swap technique. If you have my course on pro exterior photography, you know there's more than one way to handle this. That's why I show other methods as well on how to do that. And by the way, if you're not familiar with my pro exterior course or my other online courses for real estate photography, check the links down in the description for this video. I also have some instruction on doing this in more detail in the pro exteriors course, but I'm gonna cover some of that here. So the sky swap has already been done but it's far from perfect. Once again, we got these halos. And the reason why we're getting these halos around here is that there's two things. One, we're trying to feather into an area from blue sky, which was here from the original sky, but then underneath of it is a very bright white area. So two things need to be done to really blend this properly and get rid of these halos, and that's to take care of the darkness between this, these branches and the sky to be able to even that out a little bit more so we have better lighting. And then the other thing is the color that's missing because it's feathering off of here. If we were to select the mask here and do control click on the mask, you can see that it's really selecting the fringes here, but it's not selecting down in very far and it's not selecting much of the sky. So anyways, there's some quick fixes for this. Let's do control D to D select. So the first thing is let's take care of some of this brightness issue. So what you wanna do is go to the right, the layer right below your sky. Let's select this one down here. This happens to just be one layer that I was working on. And what we wanna do is add a new gray fill layer. And this is how you do it. You want to go to layer, new layer. And then we'll call this gray just so we know what it is. And then we wanna change its mode from normal to overlay. Then click OK. Now we wanna fill that with 50% gray. And the way that you do that is to go with that layer selected, go to edit, go to fill, and then 50% gray. Now a lot of times you'll see content aware is selected. You wanna make sure you select 50% gray and click OK. Now you can see that it's all gray down here, but we don't see anything because it's in overlay mode. This allows us to use the dodge and burn tools. So what we're gonna do is use the burn tool, and that's over here. If you were just to hold down your click, you would see you can select burn. Use about a 30% exposure in the midtones. And then, using a decent sized brush on this, then you would just slightly brush around these fringes. Now, let's take a look at what happened so far. I'll turn off the gray layer. You can see this is what it was before. This is what it was after. So already we're getting rid of a lot of that fringing. We'll do it over here on this area as well, just to show it real quick. For example, we'll zoom out just a little bit and then we can turn this off to see what it was before and after. So that's taking care of the contrast issue that was throwing the halos around there. You can see there's more up here that we can correct, but let's move on just working in this area right here to see how you would deal with the color issue. So once you have this all fine and you're happy with the burn that's going on here, if you went too far, add a layer mask and delete from that. Once that's done, now we need to expand our mask a little bit into the areas that were feathered improperly by the sky swap technique. And this once again was using Adobe's Photoshop sky select that then we worked off the mask. Like I said before, shown in the pro exteriors course. So let's go into this a little bit deeper and this gets a little bit more complicated, so I'll take it slow and we'll step through this step by step. What we wanna do is select the mask over here of where our sky is. Then what we wanna do is control click on the mask. That selects the masked area. Then we wanna to go to channels, and in channels there's a little icon down here that is for than creating an alpha channel. So if you select this little icon down here, which will save selection as channel, when you do, you'll see a new layer called alpha one. 
unless you have other alpha channels. But it'll be your alpha channel that we want to work with. Now do Control D to D select. Now what we want to do is only make alpha 1 visible. So you turn on the eye icon there and turn off all the other layers by clicking RGB. Now we've got this black and white image. Go back and select alpha 1 again. Now what we want to do is change the selection of the alpha channel by changing the contrast between black and white areas. Remember, we're not seeing these areas in here being masked because the mask you can see was selected. It's kind of a grayish color. It's not a clean selection. So to do that, what we'll do is grab a levels adjustment and change that. And you can see here that it's even feathering into the house. This is all the feathering, that little bit of gray area. And you can see it's feathering where it should have been doing that sky swap. Very typical of doing these type of sky swaps. So anyways, we can see everything here and we're gonna go to image, adjustments, and then levels. Then with this, on the right little doodad here, this little slider, on the level scale, move it to the left. And as you do, you'll see the halos disappear. I'm gonna go back and forth and you'll see those halos, which originally weren't as visible because they had such a smooth gradient from white to black. It looked like there was just gray inside of this dead looking tree. But as we go back and forth, we can see a lot of that. So you go to where you just get inside of those fringes. If you go too far, you're going to get rid of all the details of those little twiggy sticks out of that tree. So just go right in here to where you're just getting the area deep fringe. Now, later on, you can come back, make another selection if you really want to get more deep into here, but we're really worried about this fringe on the outside. So click OK. OK, now you want to select this selection, and to do that, on Alpha 1, you do Control click Now you can see that it's selected this area. Turn back RGB, you want to turn this back on, so click the eye icon, and now turn the visibility of Alpha 1 off by clicking its eye icon, then go back to Layers. And when we're in the Layers menu here, select on the sky the Mask. Now take a brush at about a 30% flow, and in this new selection, lightly brush in those areas. You want to see how far you've gone? Do Control D to deselect and back out. Where were we before? We were here. You can see that by adding this new amount of blue, we're there. We're now expanding that. If it was a little too much, you can back out and go here to where we loaded the selection and then just lightly brush. So we could take a brush and just go maybe once around here and once around there and see how that's working. And then you can back out of that. You can do Control D to deselect. So you can see we've got quite a bit of that now filled in, and that's really about all that we need to do. We took care of two things by one, getting rid of the contrast halos, and then by using an alpha channel, being able to then add in a little bit more sky where it needed to be. Now, one other thing you can do is you can also brighten up the sky, which will really make a big difference. And once again, ignore these other areas. We'll just work off of here. But you can add a brightness uh, adjustment layer just to the sky by going layer, adjustment layer, brightness contrast, and then add a clipping mask to it here and then brighten up just the sky. And you can see that now also gets rid of some of that defringing and makes the sky look a little bit better. Then of course the last step, like I show in my course, is you would then flatten the image, you would then add your, your post-processing preset to it and be done.